Frank here, your virtual general aviation aviator, and I am on the ramp at Concord in Concord. Um, I am in the Diamond, the DA-50, and this is my introduction flight to this aircraft. Um, so, all right, guys, y'all start driving in front of my camera. I am going to use the tail number 447 Alpha Bravo. So yeah, I'm at Concord. Uh, default scenery here. Nothing spectacular about the scenery. Um, and let's uh, let's just get a closer look at the aircraft on the outside. Oh man, check out those red rims. Uh, talk about sports, uh, sporty. All right, so I chose the purple or the bluish, how it looks to your eyes. Um, livery um now this is an introduction flight and this is to introduce both of us to this aircraft um so i know i said that once before thought i thought it was worth repeating um and this aircraft as you may have guessed by now is by arabesque um the da-50 uh got the continental 300 IO engine and I'm not one to do a lot of looking on the outside uh, I spend most of my time on the inside of the aircraft but I do like the modeling of this aircraft and I particularly like looking at it from the front end here you can see I've got passengers already uh, um, in the aircraft I can get them out just by going up here and clicking this guy going to ground options and say get rid of my passengers and i may decide to put them back on uh the flight is going to be from concord to greensboro north carolina so it's a relatively short flight and i should be able to do a relatively low altitude um to that flight for that flight the service ceiling for this aircraft by the way is 20,000 feet and oxygen is I believe oxygen is on board yeah yeah oxygen is on board um, I'm not so sure whether or not it's sealed oxygen or not um, but I want to take a look at the um, at the detail here yeah I think the I think Arabas did an awesome job I think Arabas did an awesome job with the paint with the modeling the exterior modeling um, as you can see you don't see a lot of rivets in this aircraft uh, because it is a car a carbon copy a carbon composite aircraft which means that it's super strong and super light okay and i do want to show you that front view one more time um let's see so if i get there and let's back out let's get rid of this guy here and let's see yeah okay so yeah isn't that sexy how about that <laughs> isn't that oh man look at that isn't that sexy wow and check out the t-tail um this aircraft is a t-tail and one of the things that uh, that t-tails tend to be is a little harder to control at low speeds and low altitudes uh, because the prop wind does not strike the t-tail uh, like they would a a um, a regular empennage at the bottom, you know. Once the prop is going, you got all that wind going over it. But era uh, not era bass, but Diamond has has um, has balanced this aircraft so that um, so that that's pretty much not an issue. All right, so let's pop into the cockpit here and uh, see what things look like. All right, so I can pop up my display just by clicking on the tail number that's on the inside. 
Okay, so I've got the option for custom load manager, um, where I can can I can have a little bit more control. If I check this off, then let's see. Um, well, you can see what happens. Uh, I have with it unchecked. I can add passengers let's see now what's going on okay so I can still add passenger without it being custom and I can still control fuel if I turn the custom on then I can do baggage and I can determine well I can I looks like I just get baggage right now this is incidentally version 1.0 aura and I'm not sure what the aura mean uh, I suspect that it means release okay so let's go ahead and since we got this already up let's go ahead and move our outside um, elements which would be the chalks cone um, and I can open and close doors uh, either here or here and if I want to close it, I can close it here, or I can just cl click this guy and close it. And the same with some of the other doors. It does support a GPU, which for today's flight, I am not going to use the GPU. And I did, by firing up the GPU, that did fire up the standby unit, and it takes it oh, about a minute or so to power down. But it will eventually power down. In fact, um, if you look, you can actually see it counting down in seconds. Okay, so let's get, well, before we get rid of it, let's go let's check out more options, which is not a lot to do with the aircraft. Um, that's just some, some configuration options, um, pretty much. Um, now, right now one of the things that you might want to keep in mind is that that you can free cast to the nose wheel or you can uncheck this and use some nose wheel steering so i tend to like to keep stuff as realistic as possible so i am going to use the free casting and nose wheel that tends to get me in a little trouble when i'm taxiing uh but you know it um uh, stuff come with practice okay sounds is pretty much the standard the standard x-plane sounds and about of course you get your your credits and uh special thanks to the beta team to the beta testers and uh it's that john 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 Pierre, uh, is it? I think it's pronounced John. Uh, maybe I don't think it's Jean, uh, as we pronounce it in, um, as it spelled in English. And then Peter, Stefan, and Hubert for other various uh, elements of the the um, the design. Of course, um, I see Daniel Ro Daniel Rodriguez. Carrie, uh, okay. I butcher names, but you know they did some some work. Um, let's see, uh, systems and programming. Lionel, um, Danella, um, Dan, Daniel, Daniel, Danella, uh, liveries and uh, synthetic vision. Oscar. And we're familiar with Oscar. Um, anybody who's done anything with the photogrammetry tiles have um, is familiar with that name. All right, so let's get started here. Um, we are still getting familiar with the aircraft. Um, so that does uh, that pretty much does it for this panel here. So let's. Um, Let's just check. So we got 600, 165 pounds for the co-pilot, 
um, 205 pounds for the left uh, rear passenger and 161 pounds for the right rear passenger. Some heavy, some heavy folks, right? Um, and we will lead the male um, pilot on, which, yeah, for you female flowers, and I've checked, and I don't think I really get any female visitors or subscribers on my channel, but, um, but for any of you guys who, let's see, let's get out here, for any of you guys who do want to, um, to do fly as female or uh, any uh, any of the female pilots, you know, we finally get that that choice. Um, one thing that I do wish that they would give us a choice is to have a a um, a black pilot or a or versus a just only having to choose a, a white pilot, um, someone who looked a little bit more like I do. But um, it is what it is. Um, so, all right. So, Diamond Aircraft Company. Yep. All right. So, let's get back in the cockpit. And let's see. So, we can get some air going through here. Actually, it's not that hot today. Uh, both windows are working. And I am going to close those up. Uh, at least, yeah, I'm going to close them up right now lest I forget, uh, lest me, in this case, for fear that I forget. Okay, um, overhead, now, we've got these cool um, animated visors that I heard that are animated in real life like this, and um, that's pretty cool, but what if I want to stop it I guess I don't have that granular control, and I don't. I would imagine that there is a little bit more granular control in real life. So when you fly, when you're sitting here and you want to put your arm up and hold on to something, you know these little neat uh, handhelds things are pretty cool. So yeah, all right. So let's. Uh, let's look a little bit closer so we got we do have icing um and this is the uh i think it's the glycol um wet ice de-icing system um the the engine is fully fade act uh except for um the the throttle is not uh fade act and it does have a go around button that you would need to assign a key to or program your uh, yoke to. Now, I think the Alpha yoke does have a go around button too that can be tied to that. Um, let's see. And let's see, what do we have? We got, um, we got our prop de ice. Uh, again, it's wet. Um, and this is pretty cool uh, that it's animated my my pedals. So I'm five. I think I'm. Uh, let me just lock my chair here. I think I'm five eight myself. Um, I'm sixty eight um, years old. Just joking. <laughs> I'm sixty eight inches high. Uh, which is five foot eight inches and you know some of you guys are are 72 inches or six feet tall um, anyway so here uh, since the seat is fixed we can move the, the pedals back and forth uh, as needed now the pedals are electronically operated, so I do need to apply power before I can uh, move them, uh, which I will demonstrate in a few minutes. Okay, so um, yeah, so along the the bot um, a bottom here we've got 
the these guys here. Now I read in the manual that that Arabas, not Arabas, Diamond likes to break panels up into six dis distinct areas. Um, with this area here being a a a distinct area, this area here being a distinct area, this area here being a distinct area, the pedestal being a distinct area, uh, and so forth and so on. I'll put a picture of that up um, so that you can see exactly what I'm talking about. Um, in fact, better yet, let me just pull that up right now. Okay, so um, as I mentioned, there are six distinct areas, um, six panels plus the overhead, um, and one would be the pedestal. Two would be the um, the main systems area. Three would be the upper, the main upper panel, alternators um, and backup alternator, the ice. Uh, four is the the primary displays, uh, autopilot, um, etc. Um, and I'm sorry, when I say primary displays, I mean both the both displays, the primary flight display and the multi-function flight display unit. Um, five would be the standby avionics. Let's see if we can find five here, which is this area here. And six is, uh, let's get down to six, uh, the breakers, which are uh, over here to uh, just in front of the coal pallet. And seven is, let's see, seven which, which is uh, pl is the plus, which is the overhead, and I can show you the overhead. Let's see. So this is what the overhead looked like. Um, got a compass and a compass correction information. Uh, lights. I think the lights were actually part of the um, the PFD or uh, the are the primary displays. Okay, so so you get the idea. All right, so let's um, let's get these guys out of the way and let them fold back in and let's get started here. Um, okay, so I've started this aircraft before and it's really simple to start. Uh, the first thing I am going to do is make sure my fuel valve is turned on. By default, it's gonna be turned off. So I'm gonna, um, you may have noticed that I actually had to open the armrest to get to that. Uh, so this is the armrest and I actually had to open it, which I can click on it and voila. Okay, so let's uh, turn this guy uh, it's got three settings, off, emergency, and normal. And I'm going to turn it to normal. And that's about it. <clears throat> Make sure that my flight stick is pulled back. Make sure that my brakes are engaged. Uh, this little lever here is my brake lever. And I um, pretty much don't have very much to do. Turn my engine master on. And let's let everything start up before we actually, <clears throat> um, we well actually, I think I missed a step. Before I can, before I turn my engine master on, I need to turn my battery master on. Okay. And let's see, my battery master was, uh, okay, where was my battery master? Um... Oh yeah, right here. I'm sorry. <laughs> battery, uh, it's the, it's the electric master. So there's my battery master, and you can see everything starting up. And I like that Aerobass has animated some startup time. 
right now it's going through some internal testing and I would get an REO warning uh, alert when things test out. Okay, so nose gear is down. Make sure that's down. Um, and system test. Okay. So my tall system, my, my terrain awareness warning system is okay. So that's good to know. All right, traffic. All right, and we got one more aura warning. I don't really have test. So my TCAS um, test has passed, and that's pretty much it. So with the throttle to idle, I can turn my engine master on. And I just hold my start, press my start button. And voila, it is started. Now I'm going to adjust my throttle up a little bit. At a glance, I can see my oil pressure came up because my oil, not my oil pressure light is no longer yellow. I don't know if you noticed that it was yellow before. Okay, so I'm getting a red warning. You know, red requires immediate attention. It's let me know that my voltage is, is not, has not come up. So I'm going to flip on my alternators and voila, my, my voltage has come up and my secondary alternator is now on. And as the engine warms up, then my, my temperatures should should come slowly up into the green. In fact, my coolant temp is almost up and you'll see the coolant light go out uh, momentarily. Okay, so I'm going to hold this view while I talk and until that light goes out and, and while we're waiting on that, I am going to go ahead and fire up my primary display which is my avionics ah shucks guys I didn't didn't realize that that let's say I'm gonna just turn it off and and uh, let you see that light that that where the coolant temperature and the gearbox temperature has um, the caution signals has gone away uh, I actually wanted you to see that but hey I'm sure that you guys trust that what I was trying to demonstrate is actually what happened. I do like that on their on their um, multifunction flight display unit. They do provide some additional credits to the developers. I think that's really cool, and they also show me what my my database what database I have running, uh, which is pretty cool okay uh, the breakers are modeled and you know at, there was a time when uh, breakers being modeled kind of was kind of a a thing that showed well you know the developer went far and above to actually model breakers um, for payware, having your breakers model is becoming the standard. If I buy an aircraft today and the breakers are not modeled, then I am not going to be that happy with the aircraft. Um, and one thing about having breakers modeled is you can tell, um, you can tell, explain to pull the breakers uh, randomly or in this case you can actually tell um, you can actually tell um, Arabas to pull the breakers ran randomly by going here and under let's see where is oh okay uh, right here I've got um, reset all breakers and then I've got reliability perfect you know breakers are not gonna um, shut they, they're gonna work perfectly 
being realistic and I've got uh, entertaining <laughs> and then I got challenging you know breakers are gonna be all over the place uh, I like realistic because I like to keep things as realistic as possible uh, I mentioned oxygen and the reason why I think I mentioned oxy oxygen is because there is oxygen on board um, what I don't know about the oxygen is whether or not the cabin is sealed. I don't think it is, so I think in order to use the oxygen, you, you still need to put on a, um, a system that's going to put the oxygen up your nose. Um, I could be wrong about that, um, but I haven't seen anything about, you know, take this wonder here I mean this wonder I don't see any 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 ceiling sealant any reason to believe that that this wonder wouldn't let pressure air pressure come through okay so enough about that all right so the aircraft is started everything is nice and warmed up and now I can enter my flight plan okay so there is a trick to the flight plan I've got on my pedestal I've got this guy here um, on my armrest so so yeah now I can I can actually open it up here and enter my flight plan which is kind of um, awkward but you know it works um, so, um, but doing it this way, I can, I can see my PDF, you know, I actually program my, my computer to show it to me this way. Uh, let's see if I can bring it up the way that I should, uh, this way. And in which case I would need to shut it and open up the whole thing and let's see there we go um but if i'm entering a flight plan with the armrest open then i can't see my primary flight display uh, so i'm am literally just discovering that the best way for me to have fixed my view is to have this guy closed open this guy up and and I can enter my flight plan and see my primary flight my multifunction uh, multifunction flight display okay so my plan is to go to Greensboro and I'm just gonna fly direct um, well I actually can fly to the GSO, GSO, VOR, and then um, enter that. And actually, looks like I'm entering it backwards. I did that earlier today. Uh, only I did take uh, clear, clear, clear. I did take one flight in this aircraft that to kind of start to get to learn some things about it and hit OK and now if I were to go down and try GSO which is the VOR that I'm trying to to enter OK and then yeah now I'm, now I'm clicking with gas KGSO the GSO VOR is to the south of Greensboro, and I'm entering from the southwest, so it makes sense to kind of fly towards that GSO. K, GSO, Greensboro. Uh, Kilo Sierra Oscar. All right, enter twice. Okay, so. As you can see, the flight is six, 56 nautical miles, and let's 
just pop this out so that you can see. Um, so I'm leaving uh, Concord Regional just, out, just outside of Charlotte. And I'm going to fly 53 nautical miles on a, on a track of uh, 051. And, and that's going to put me within four miles of uh, Greensboro. So that's the plan. All right. And let's pop this guy back in. Now, one thing about Aerobass panels is since on most panels you can just click anywhere and pop it out but with Aerobass you need to see this this white icon before it pops out so if I just click here nothing happens but if I click if I get a white icon then it does pop out and the reason why Aerobass do that um, to my to my belief is on a lot of the aircrafts um, I can use I can click in various spots to control to to make changes like I, I can click here and adjust my barometer uh, see that I can uh, so I can adjust my barometer just by clicking in here as opposed to having as opposed to clicking in it and popping it out um, so yeah all right so that's pretty cool um, let's see I can actually blow up stuff by by stro 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 I'm almost about to say scroll I have scroll stro scroll scroll it is scroll s s c r as opposed to s t r I can scroll my mouse button and um, adjust just this versus having to come over to the range and and scroll this way. So so yeah, that's why I got to find click spots to do the pop outs. All right. Now let's see, okay. Looks like this guy right here might give me some idea of um, let's see I'm not sure I did not look this one up in the manual but this may have something to do with the oxygen uh, but I kind of doubt it I don't know let's see and I never looked behind the seat okay there's my fire extinguisher um, and Speaking of looking behind the seats, um, look at this guy. I mean, talk about nice modeling. And hey, check this out. These guys can adjust the lights themselves. Um, so they've got some granular control over the back, over lighting, lighting in the back. All right, so let's get back where we should be. And let's so we've got our flight plan in it and we can close this guy down and we do need to open this because the manual says that that the armrest should be open on takeoff well on basically on all operations except cruise and cruise I can close the armrest and kind of relax all right, so you hear the you hear the engine, and I'm gonna turn it up a little bit, make sure you can hear it. Um, one of the first things that popped out—I know I'm skipping around. One of the first things that popped out when I first opened this aircraft up was the stitching here, how it how it kind of looked effervescent and kind of popped out at me. That's just a side note. All right, back to the engine sounds. Yeah, yeah. All right, so while I'm here and I'm thinking about it, let me go ahead and set my flaps to take off. 
um, see the flap move and and yep okay fill is set all right and go ahead and set my flaps set my flaps to take off and 133 knots indicated is I don't want to lower my flaps at 134. I want to be at 133 or below. And that's kind of what that's telling me. All right, so let's, um, since we've heard the engine sounds, I'm going to go ahead and put my headset on. And I've got headsets on. Okay. Um, traffic Global is running in the background. Gee, I love traffic global because without that I would feel like I'm, I would almost feel like I'm flying in a world by myself anyway I tend lately I've been keeping the labels on and I only would turn them off if they become distracting okay let's do it all right let's release the brake and I I have turned off I got realistic steering on so I've got to use um, I just thought about something else. I got to use differential braking for, to steer this aircraft, which I am absolutely terrible at. But if it's any consolation, this particular aircraft steer really well with differential braking. Now, what I thought about is I haven't gotten an ATIS or decided which runway I'm going to take off on. So... Um, for this airport, uh, let me pop into Sky Vector. So now that I got Sky Vector up, now I can look and get my frequencies, which is uh, pretty important. Okay, so. ADOS is 133.67, ground is 134.65, uh, ground. Tower is 134.65, and ground is 121.85, so it's, so ground is 0.85, not right knees down, um, and I should, but I am not, so... But it's all good. It's all good in the neighborhood. And you all actually, let me just pull it up one more time. Um, and you guys had a chance to see it on my map. Uh, you guys had a chance to see my route while I had it pulled up. Okay, I was trying to say, see my route on the map, <laughs> and it came out the way it came out. All right, so tower, I've got tower almost in. I got 134. Let's see, let's get ATIS in. ATIS is 133.65, so if we go to the bottom and flip it, okay, we got ATIS in, and it's on COM2, and before we listen, let's go ahead and Put tower in 134.65 and tower is in and so we just need to put ground in and flip them all right and ground is 0.85 and when we say point uh, that's what I'm trying to do I still am my I'm still trying to learn to put stuff in muscle memory so it just take working with the 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 G1000 before stuff become muscle memory. Now this is going to be a VFR flight, so let me go ahead and turn my my transponder to altitude reporting. Um, it's okay to do that on the ground now. In fact, it's almost required to do that on the on the ground, um, but it's okay to do it before a taxi. 
um, go ahead and turn my pedo install heater on and because I want to clear all my cast all right now let's go ahead and listen Concord RGNL information kilo kilo 1600 Zulu weather wind calm visibility more than 10 sky condition 6000 few temperature 22 dew point 9 altimeter 2994 arriving runway 02 departing runway 02 advise on initial contact you have kilo okay got kilo and and zero two and two nine nine four all right okay so back up and primary flight displays are set with the correct barometer or altimeter setting and we are ready to call tower and I'm gonna try and simulate a radio call if I had you know this will be a good time. A short flight like this would, would have been a good time to do a VAT sim flight. Um, but I would have to restart the sim in order to do a VAT sim flight because I need to get X Pilot running and all of that good stuff. Anyway, um, plus, yeah. So, anyway, I am going to do the best I can with, AT, with simulating ATC. All right, so let's uh, go ahead and go to tower, I mean ground, and we're at the, the, let's see, I guess I need to know, there's only one, there's only one um, taxi, taxiway and that would be Alpha, okay. So let's do this. Concord ground. <laughs> oh my God, I forgot what I'm flying. This is the Diamond DA, let's see. All right, so we just call it Diamond. Concord ground. Diamond 447 Alpha Bravo is at the FBO and we're ready to taxi. We've got Kilo. Taxi to runway 02 via Alpha 447 Alpha Bravo. Okay. All right, so. Um. I did I don't let's say I wonder I wonder if this aircraft I'm gonna pop outside to see if this aircraft ah, for that to happen, has a strobe light that comes on automatically I don't see any strobes I'm trying to get up under it ah, wrong key Yeah, so I'm not seeing any strokes. So that means that when I started, I should have turned on, I should have turned on a light manually. Okay, so uh, I'm getting ready to taxi, so I'm gonna turn, I don't wanna turn on my strobe, but I do wanna turn on my taxi light, okay? And I'm gonna release my brake. And do a brake check. Left brake, right brake, both brakes. Brakes are checking. And okay, so we're going to zero two. And close. Uh, that's not what I wanted. Pop this guy out so I can see what's going on. Clear. Okay, clear. Clear. I don't want to remove it, so I'm going to clear again and just hit that guy, all right? And what I want to do is zoom in on my airport. Um, zero 02 is at the bottom here. So if I turn to the left, 
and go to the left and that should take me to zero two. Alright, so so yeah. Alright, pop that back in. Clear right, clear left. Alright. And hope you guys can hear the engine a little bit. I know I got my headphones on which muted it a little bit. They want us to get on Alpha. We can pick up Alpha here. towards 20. So we're headed south. Compass is a green. Now, one thing I did not do that I probably should have done, in fact, we'll, we'll do it as our only run-up check, and that's to do our FADAT test. Um, I'm not, I've never done a FADAT test, so I'm not sure what happens on a FADAT, FADAT test. And I don't know if this airport has a run-up area. <clears throat> Excuse me. So, so taxi lights are on. see a run-up area. I don't see a run-up area. So I'm just going to pull out to the side. Point the prop wash towards this field. Because winds were calm. Alright. And set the brake here. Alright. See what happens. Okay, and we do a force. I'm not sure what force B means. Okay, so when when I do the force, I'm seeing the RPMs go down initially before they come up. And when I do the auto, I'm seeing the load change. Loads going up to 38, RPMs going up to about 1760. All right. And of course, I did see the the cast message pop off pop on and off okay so so yeah there's my fade act test and um other than that i don't have any mags to check and i guess i could turn the alternators off 
just to see if I get cast messages and I got one there and I got one there so yeah so I guess that does it for my run up nothing's coming so I can release my break Let's line up. Change frequencies. And make this radio call. Concord Tower Diamond 447 Alpha Bravo is holding at runway 02, ready to depart uh, to the to the north. East. Clear for takeoff, runway 02, Diamond 447 Alpha Bravo. Okay, so clear for takeoff. Alright, so let's clear, make sure ain't nothing coming, make sure the runway is clear, and we are good to go. Alright, lights. Strobes on, landing light on, we'll leave that taxi on. Um, I'm just go ahead and turn it off while I'm thinking about it. Lights, camera, um, alt alt altitude reporting on the transponder and cross check on the attempt on the compass. Another quick check. Passenger brief, ladies and gentlemen, we're about to take off. So make sure that your seat belts are secure and um, take off. We feel like we're, we're, we feel like we'll accelerate really quickly if I am not. If I feel like the aircraft is misbehaving or I'm not at an area that I'm comfortable with, then I would kill the power. If I'm, if I'm below 50 knots, if I'm above 50 knots, then I'm going to go ahead and take off. I've got 50 knots, so 68, rotate. Climb out at 79 with the flaps in. Positive rate, gear up. Flaps up climb out at 94. Is our out? Is our let's just do 35. Uh, no, we do 55. 55 is our cruising altitude. One thing about um, VFR flying, we get to decide where at what altitude we want. Let's look for traffic. And traffic, real good. All 
right. Just correct back over. And we'll set our altitude for 55. damper can come on. Flight direct is already on. There's an intercept here. So I'm going to go ahead and engage our autopilot. Now I'm going to hand fly for just a little bit longer. could be climbing a little bit faster than I am. Uh, actually, uh, I need to pull the torque back to 90 because uh, I shouldn't be, I shouldn't have it red line any longer than five minutes. That's the max uh, that I should have the torque um, for. All right. And so at 90, I should be I can climb out at 94. capturing my, my 5,500 feet. Okay, so let's do a review here. All right, we're headed to GSO, that, uh, which is a VOR. Uh, we're on GPS, autopilot, yaw damper, and obsolete zone. We've captured our 5,500 foot so we should be leveling off and we can adjust our our power set to a cruise power set um, so 75 at 75 let's see look at my notes here at 75 that should gives us give us roughly 165 not indicated, which that's not going to happen. Um, but but my speed is creeping up. Um, I did read in the manual that the system, that the aircraft, that we should use flight, flight level change um, when we're increasing. Now something's killing my frame rate, and I'm not sure what it is. But usually, whatever it is, it will resolve, and and I get my frames back shortly. So I'm expecting that to happen any second. 
back up to about 27, 26, 27 frames per second. So I don't know what the computer was doing, but whatever it was doing, it was busy. <laughs> Of course, that wouldn't happen in real life, would it? All right, so let me check on my passengers back there. Hit this button here. Make sure that didn't happen again. And now, let's try and check on our passengers back there. All right. Oh, man, I didn't put any passengers back there. Okay. I don't think I did. Apparently, I did. Uh, no. So I've got one passenger on board. For some reason, I thought I had um, had it the rest of my passengers. Um, it, would, it would be poor form to add them now, but this is a introduction, introductory flight. So let's just add them so that we can see what happened. Well, first of all, we can see if we can add them in flight, which I'm pretty sure we can. says they're on, on board. Okay. So, oh, I get it. I have to be outside of the aircraft to see the passengers in the back. Check out parameters, our load is 75%. We at a hundred um, hundred and forty-three indicated and it was the uh, true airspeed that should have been that should be about 165 at at 75% load and our true airspeed right now is 155. I think we're maxed out on our true airspeed. Uh, let's click this guy. Hopefully we can find our aircraft. Yeah, there, there I am. Let's see, we've got 30 nautical miles before we get to, to the Greensboro VOR. So there are some things that I need to do um, that I tend to wait until it's too late. That's number one. Look up my uh, enter my my radio frequency. So let's let me get those for Greensboro and I'm going to do it off screen here. Uh, let's see. So so ADOS for Greensboro is 128.55 So let's dial this up to 55. Let me uh, zoom in so you guys can see. Uh, 55. And 128. Alright, let's pop, pop that in. And let's go ahead and put in our tower and ground. Um, tower is 119.1. So we'll put that in first. And that's the first people we need to speak with. One one nine. Flip that in, and ground is going to be one twenty one point nine. So it's point nine. Okay, so let's pop back out here and let's listen to our haters. P 
Piedmont Triad INTL Information Kilo. Kilo. 1700 Zulu weather. Wind calm, visibility more than 10. Sky clear, temperature 13, dew point minus 15. Altimeter 2992. Arriving runway 32, departing runway 32. Advise on initial contact you have Kilo. Okay, so we're arriving 32. And to be honest with you, 32 is is the shortest runway at Greensboro. We can do 32 because we are in a GA aircraft, but um, but if we were in a a larger aircraft, then I wouldn't imagine them giving us 32 when when the length of 32 is 6,300 feet and they've got a they've got a 10,000 foot and a 9,000 foot runway but we'll take 32 okay so we're expecting 32 we're 22 nautical miles out at 5,000 so let's go ahead and get down 2,000 feet uh, so out to drop this by 2,000 feet, and we'll do a 500 foot per minute. Well, actually, five is a little bit. Yeah, we'll do 700. All right, and pull it back on our on our power. Diamond DA fifty RG. Now, one thing I have noticed about the the, the FADEC control with the RG, every time I make a change, then my engine idles up a little bit. I suspect that changing the uh, the throttle causes the fuel boost to to come on. Uh, I don't know the reason why it idles up, and I'm assuming that that's model it's model. Uh, 1,000 to go. I'm assuming that it's modeled close to how the aircraft operates in real life. So, so yeah. All right. So let's um, let's go through an initial glance test. Uh, well, let's see how far we, how far we out. We're 16 nautical miles out. Um, yeah, we are close enough to go through an initial glump test. 128.55, we've got our destiny. We've already listened to the ADOS. We've got, uh, I think it was a kilo. Um, and this was a kilo. Let's see. My, not the chat. Piedmont Triad INTL information kilo. Kilo. 1700 Zulu weather. Yeah, so we still got kilo. Nothing changed. All right. So let's. Uh, the airport elevation is at is 900. So let's go ahead and set this the altitude down to 2,000. Um, pattern is 1,900. So I 
at that set. The 2000, I know you guys couldn't really see what I was doing. Okay, glumps, lights, gas, undercarriage, mixture, not, not needed, props, automatic. All right, so uh, both of them, both mixture and props are automatic. All right, so I can see my airport. Three, two, should be. Let's see, three, two. I'm looking for parallel runways. All right, so I've got a runway here and a runway there. And I should have a runway running across. nautical miles out Greensboro Tower Diamond 447 Alpha Bravo is 10 miles to the southwest inbound four stop expect runway 32 Diamond 447 Alpha Bravo okay so yeah they are definitely using 32 all right, so at this point, I am gonna release my flight director. Release my autopilot, my flight director, and my yaw damper. Okay, and I actually need to see the runway get down to that 1900 but I also need to see the runway that I want to land on and yeah there is the top of it okay yeah there's the top of it so gonna enter on a base. Hey Tan. So we're gonna enter on a base and make a turn. And be a little bit more aggressive to get down. that runway again. Okay, there it is. All right, so I think I want to make my turn about right up in here. So, I need to know where I'm going to fly to. And it looks like I had just enough fuel to get to my destination. Looks like I'm low on my left tank. Got a little reserve on my right tank. Two glumps again. Lights, uh, gas, automatic lights, landing and strobes are on, undercarriage down, mixture automatic, props automatic. Alright, glumps is completed. Seat, seat belts. 
and that completes glass. turbulence there. Pattern, so I'm going to level off. One thing about the DA 50, it seems to be a really easy aircraft to fly. I may have put my landing gear down a little early, but that's okay. Didn't actually see my landing lights on. So I'm going with landing and taxi lights uh, because on the DA-50, it looks like I only got one light for landing. of the uh, column there. Back down the pattern. Turn the final. Cliff Land Runway 32 Diamond 447 Alpha Bravo. Alright, so we've got a landing clearance. Throw in the first notch of flaps. Touchdown is about 75 knots. Five hundred. We're on the slope. Four hundred. We're on a one mile final, runway three two. We got a nice approach speed, so we stable. 
Too low. Flaps. Okay. Let's go ahead and put in our landing flaps. And our sim wants to do whatever it does. Too low. Flaps. 200. Okay. Flaps are four. Set for landing and for a fog. 100. I made a speed there. 74. Eyes to the end of the runway. Flare. And we buttered it. Cross runway zero five. And we're gonna exit to the right to get the general aviation. Okay, we are Delta and Kilo. One to one point nine. See ya. Okay, so they just told me to go to ground. And make this call. Greensboro ground. Diamond four four seven Alpha Bravo is at Delta and Kilo. On F we like the we're going to the FBO. Taxes to the FBO via via Kilo Delta Delta One. Okay, so got our taxi instructions, and we are going via Delta. So we're on Kilo. Yield to uh, yield to oncoming traffic. Diamond set seven alpha bravo. Okay, so we're yielding to the what is that? A sure what that is. Okay, so this ought to be delta here. And we just follow this guy. If he makes that first turn, then he's on Delta One. Oh, he's taxiing out. So I'm taxiing to Delta One. Oh, so that's why they put me on three too. Maybe so I could close to general aviation when I land it. <laughs> okay, down to one. I doubt it because I didn't follow that much of a flight plan for them to even know. Alright. For the sim to know. But actually it wasn't even the sim. It was it was, it was the Us that had us go to Delta to 3 2. With winds calm. Okay. I really need a more powerful video card because uh, there are some micro stutters that this, that the sim really doesn't pick up but my brain picks them up and they are they can be pretty uncomfortable all right brakes are set and we're parked here 
All right, so let's, uh, let's power it down. Um, I forgot to turn off my strobes. I forgot to clean up. FLT, I forgot all about it. I always remember FLT. Okay, so uh, let's turn off switches. Avionics Master can come off and you know I never turn on this essential bus but it's not for normal operation um, okay and didn't need the de-icing my alternators can come off alternator 1 alternator 2 and I can kill the engine And my main power can go off. All right, and that starts my countdown on my backup unit. All right, so my engine fuel can go to zero. Let me turn my uh, emergency my power back on just for a second. I want to see where I'm at with the. Um, with the fuel and th finally because I didn't check that and finally let's see fuel yeah that left fuel is just about out and before we kill the simulation let's look at our landing alright so we're on that final Outside. And I got a major stutter going on. That a beautiful aircraft, guys. Stable approach there. This is a butter landing. And this is literally only the second landing I've done in this aircraft. <clears throat> so that's a testament as to how easy it is to fly. I don't know what's causing this big stutter but it is what it is okay I put in that final notch of flaps there it's getting a little slow so let me give it a little throttle and I had the hardest time tracking that center line but I'm on it how about that? You know? I'll take it. All right. So, I think that uh, 
we started the the faded the master back up to check the gas. All right, guys. So that does it for the introduction to the DA fifty RG by Diamond. Be unique and a little bit more of the third psalm. So, looks like now there's my oxygen. And I wonder if I got one on the other side here. No? I see what's happening now. The it's act, It actually did put on a mask. Uh, once I pull the oxygen, looks like it put on a mask and it's redrawing something. So in the process of redrawing, it's either going to crash or finish drawing and it, it decided to crash. All right. So until next time, y'all come back now. Yeah.